I'm going to be presenting some, some new work, uh, having just published these two books, one on failure, the queer art of failure, and one on Gaga feminism, I realized that I kept coming back to the topic of anarchism. And I don't mean anarchism in a sort of old European sense of an anarchist group who are trying to overthrow the state. I mean a um, much um, more sort of culturally oriented sense of anarchism that, as Christoph was saying, um, is interested in the emergence of new forms of life and in thinking about how to facilitate such an emergence, how to recognize such an emergence um, should it happen, and to think about what uh, revolutionary uh, transformation actually looks like and sounds like. So that's a little map for where we're going because I actually do have a lot of examples that I want to show you to illustrate the building blocks of the ideas that I want to um, set in motion. So to help us on our way tonight, I um, have some quotations that will um, sort of guide us along. Um, and so we, we should start with a, um, a kind of older conjuring of anarchism, if you like. Um, but this is a very queer statement, I think, by Emma Goldman. Here she is citing Oscar Wilde, which may not have meant much to her then, but it means plenty to us now. Um, and she's citing Oscar Wilde um, in terms of uh, suggesting that the impractical might be the way to think about forward momentum because the practical is always connected to ways of being that we already know and that we already recognize. So in order for an idea to be properly new, it has to present itself in the form of impossibility, impracticality, um, the irrational, and so on. So she says, more than any other idea, it is helping to do away, um, anarchism is indeed practical. More than any other idea, it's helping to do away with the wrong and foolish um, it is building and sustaining new life, okay? And it's that piece of anarchism that I want to push forward with, the idea that anarchism was interested in breaking from state logics, and it didn't necessarily know what was going to come next. And because we've never really had lived in anarchist societies, we don't know what that realization would look like. So... I recognize that there are different histories and traditions of anarchism that you're familiar with and that pr you're probably sort of tired of, but I'm going to reference other alternative histories of anarchism as I go. And in order to also get away from this older understanding of anarchism, I'm going to introduce this concept of the wild, the wild as this piece of anarchism that is interested in disturbing the order of things and producing new life. Okay, so that's the first quote. The second quote we'll, you'll, we'll come back to later, but um, Nietzsche uh, in The Will to Power says, not to know, but to schematize, to impose upon chaos only as much regularity and form as require. To me, that could be a methodology. Is it possible, it, as we think, as we produce knowledge, to only impose upon the chaos of the world, of phenomenon, only as much regularity and form as our practical needs require, right? Because when we study something, we impose all kinds of practical considerations upon it and change it in the process. Um, James C. Scott, who we, I'm going to come back to later in the talk in his new book on anarchism, uh, is, has some very interesting things to say about new political projects. But here, in Seeing Like a State, he proposes as an alternative to seeing like a state within modernity, seeing like an, a state being, uh, being interested in the accountability of populations, he proposes illegibility as something that remains a source for political uh, autonomy. So that you can read that into uh, my interesting chaos, I think. And as the various examples mount, you'll see that many of my examples are taken from black culture and black music. Fred Moten, in a po book of poems, says the right to love refusal, refusal is a major building block in anarchist thinking, is black music, which sounds like a, a, a kind of mysterious statement that I hope will become crystal clear um, a part way through uh, the talk. Okay. Oh, I had another one. Um, 
This, is, this quote is, first of all, I, I'm really taken with this little manifesto, The Coming Insurrection, by the Invisible uh, Committee out of France. And it was one of the things that inspired me to write my little Gaga manifesto uh, in uh, Gaga feminism. But I really like this very different rendering of revolution that we find uh, in The Coming uh, uh, Insurrection, where they remind us that an insurrection is not like a plague or a forest fire a linear process which spreads from place to place after initial sparks. Instead, it takes the shape of music, whose focal points, through dis though dispersed in time and space, succeed in imposing the rhythms of their own vibrations, always taking on more density. Now, all of my examples, or most of them tonight, are taken from music. So I want us to see if we could potentially follow a sonic trail of emergence, of newness, uh, and of anarchy, rather than looking for building blocks in the realm of, let's say, the political, the social, political economy, uh, or whatever. So, and I also really like this rendering of revolution as not an uprising where there's a break uh, from the contemporary, but as music, something that moves through the body and moves it in the process. 